Welcome to Viewing and Reviewing, where I pull older movies off the shelf, watch them, and let you know if I believe they're worth your time to watch or not. I'm Bobby T, your online video store clerk, and I'll be searching through my VHS, DVD, and Blu-ray collection to find titles that I think may be interesting to review. In today's episode, I'll be reviewing 1982's An Officer and a Gentleman, directed by Taylor Hackford and starring Richard Gere, Deborah Winger, David Keith, and the ultimate scene stealer, Drill Sergeant, Lewis Gossett Jr. Let me read you the DVD cover. Once in a great while, a movie comes along that truly grips and uplifts its audiences. Such a movie is An Officer and a Gentleman, a timeless tale of romance, friendship, and growth. Loner Zach Mayo, Richard Gere, enters officer candidate school to become a Navy pilot, and in 13 torturous weeks, he learns the importance of discipline, love, and friendship. Lewis Gossett Jr. won an Academy Award for his brilliant portrayal of Foley, the tough drill instructor who teaches Zack that no man can make it alone. And while Foley tries to warn the young officer about the local girls who will do anything to catch themselves pilot husbands, Zack eventually learns to love one, Deborah Winger, while his fellow candidate, a memorable character portrayed by David Keith, struggles with a very different fate. An Officer and a Gentleman is a rich and satisfying story with moving performances that will stay with you long after the film has ended. Well, like the DVD says, this is a film that sticks with you years later. This is probably my sixth or seventh time watching the movie and it never seems to get old. The cast is one of the better ensembles you'll ever see, led by Richard Gere as the hot-headed Mayo and the equally hard-headed Drill Sergeant played by the scene-stealing Louis Gossett Jr. Now when these two are on screen together, genuine sparks fly. I think that's why it, it makes this film so good, which is the cast's chemistry. You know, there doesn't seem to be the normal kumbaya camaraderie we see in ensemble films. This film felt like every character was who they portray, and either they get along or they don't, and we see genuine friction rarely shown in film. There's much made of the legend that Gear and co-star Deborah Winger hated each other during filming. But sometimes that happens between two leads. It can lead to a memorable performance, similar to Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey did in Dirty Dancing. What sets this film apart are the layer upon layer of relationships amongst the, the cadets and the drill sergeant. It's rare to have so many subordinate characters have proper arcs littered throughout the storyline without bogging down the overall theme of the film. In this one, you have the lone wolf asshole that doesn't play well with others, the military family brat who only joined to make his parents and his dead brother happy, the woman helping, hoping to be the first female jet pilot, the married family man who joined to help his family's station in life, the spoiled rich kid that knows all the rules until real life fears get in the way, the little man syndrome wannabe that, that becomes the platoon leader by the end of the film. They're all guided by an actor who rightfully earned the Oscar as the omnipresent drill sergeant. Plus, you have the, uh, the two townie girls who are looking to hook a Navy pilot through sex or other means to get out of their one-horse town. And you get to know all of them without it becoming a nine-hour miniseries. It's really impressive. I think the reason this film is so beloved these many years later, decades actually, is specifically because of the universal themes that never seem to change in the military. We know all of these people and they either make it or they don't. Oh, and let's not forget about that song at the fade out. I mean, it's iconic for a reason. So, my overall report card looks like this. Does it stand the test of time? This is an absolutely easy A. Military movies stand the test of time fairly well. Films about boot camp in particular seem to, to weather the storm of time better than most. To this day, retired military members still rate this as accurate to a fault. That's high enough praise for me. Story. Again, this is, a, this is classic storytelling. I'd go as far as to say this should be taught in how to write film for ensemble casts. A+. Plus. To put it as succinctly as I can, I've written several screenplays myself over the years and I wish I could write films as well as this. That's as much flattery as I can muster for this wonderful script. The only nitpick I'll make here is it breaks my heart to see such a bright light as Paula ending up with a future spousal abuser like Mayo. But that's just me projecting beyond the screen. The cast. <laughs> I know this is getting a bit redundant here, but this again is an A+. There isn't any other way around it. Not one single weak point. 
Even the towny people are perfect. How often do you get to see the beloved Mr. Edwards from Little House on the Prairie play a jerk dad for all of two minutes on screen? I heard both John Travolta and John Denver, yeah, John Denver the country singer, were both approached to play the Mayo League character, and I think had that happened, we never would be talking about this film like we do today. As much of an asshole as Gear may have been during this time in his career, he was perfectly cast as the troubled bully with the past. People played to their strong suits throughout. Special recognition to David Keith, though. If anyone does, I mean, if anyone doesn't wish that they had a best friend like Sid, I don't know who you, you'd want to have. Cinematography. Again, this also fits into the A category. It's a military base in the early 80s. Everything looked right. My understanding is the U.S. Navy didn't want this film made, so the fact the filmmakers were able to place the story on a base that looked and felt authentic was a feather in their cap. Northwest Washington weather never looked more depressing at times, as did the paper mill the townie girls worked at. But it was the military training scenes that take the cake. First class filmmaking all around. The music. Don't you hate movies that wreck the curve here? It's an A. They won Best Music original song at the Oscars for Up Where We Belong. The rest of the film works exactly as you'd expect. Damn it. <laughs> so, based upon the above scores, I would have to rate this film a very disappointing D-. <laughs> I'm kidding. Kidding. This is a solid A film. It's one of the all-time great military movies that people still quote today. You have the entire cast going on to long, acting careers. You have multiple Oscars being won. You have an ending that still ranks as one of the classiest exits in the history of cinema. There isn't much left to say other than this is a classic and should be on everyone's must-watch list. One of my all-time faves and I'm thankful to have watched it yet again. So here are a few other recommendations along this same vein. Possibly the greatest basic training film of all time is Full Metal Jacket, starring hands down the greatest drill sergeant in film history, R. Lee Ermey, who actually technically, technically advised Lewis Gossett on this film, if that gives you any perspective. Now I think the second half of the film in Vietnam isn't as strong as the first half basic parts, but it's a can't miss film nonetheless. And here's a, here's a one, Top Gun. And okay, before you flame me in the comments section below, hear me out. A hot-headed Navy pilot goes to military school training, where he not only meets the love of his life, but his best friend dies, and he takes one for the team through a selfless act where he finds redemption as a classy Navy officer in the end. Now, feel free to flame away. Ha! <laughs> and one of those out of left field recommendations, because what would an online video clerk be without some obscure references? How about Navy SEALs Buds Class 234 from the Discovery Channel? This hard to find real life miniseries should be watched by any hardcore military buff or even casual observer wanting to see how truly barbaric and intense Navy SEAL training can be in real life. We follow through the entire brutal six month course where of the 83 men and women who start the course, only 17 graduate by the end. It's an officer and a gentleman on steroids without the nudity or the Oscar wins. At the end of the series, you'll have new respect for our military heroes and heroines. Well done, folks. Well, that's it for an officer and a gentleman. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click the like button below. If you want to keep up to date on my future reviews, please click the subscribe button below. If you want to purchase an officer and a gentleman on DVD or Blu-ray, or if you wish to purchase any of the other titles I've mentioned earlier, please follow the Amazon links below, and I'll get a small residual if you're so inclined. If you have any suggestions for movies you'd like me to review, please leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, be sure to help others in need even if you get nothing in return. Have a great week.